All right, so we've got a uh, red line today. Red lines are definitely my uh, most popular videos. Uh, this is a McLaren M6A, I think. It's really hard to read it. Let's see if I think that's what it says. Yeah, it's hard to read it. M6A. Uh, it's a cool car. Really cool car. Uh, I don't. Uh, I haven't been doing as many red lines recently because well, lots of reasons. Um, they're very expensive. Like even getting ones in these condition, this is this is like it takes a cheap hobby, which is what this started out as, and turns into an expensive one. Um, also, the spare parts are getting really, really hard. Like, uh, the wheels, you can still find them, but the quality has gone down so much. The, the place I used to get them from, really high quality. I can't get them from Aaron there anymore. I think they've stopped making them. Uh, much lower quality. Uh, the paint you can still find. Um, also, people are more picky about them, so when I make mistakes, uh, they get upset. Uh, they are cool, though. I mean, I like them. I think people like them because it's so nostalgic. Uh, this is definitely a cool car. So anyway, we're going to make it look better. This one isn't in terrible condition at all. This should be a very easy restoration. Oh, yeah, that's another reason why I'd really, they're not my favorite. They're a lot easier to do than, like, some of the Matchbox or some of the other ones that I do. Um, much less challenge for me because I've done so many of them. Uh, but anyway, let's get this guy apart, and we'll get him looking better than him. Boy, I like this color of purple. I'm going to see if I, I don't know if I have this color, but if I do, I'll try and remake it. The punch keeps my drill bit from wandering. So the trick is to go slow and take off as little as possible. This needs a little bit more. All right, so this base is actually in really good shape. It's got some glue on it. This is gonna be a, oh, that's like a putty. Mm. Okay, I was afraid it was going to be glue. If it's putty, that shouldn't be too bad. Yeah, that shouldn't be too hard. Maybe it's gum. Yeah, but it's chewing gum. Yeah, that's kind of gross when you think about it. Um, yeah, it's dirty. It's got some corrosion, but this isn't in bad shape at all, relatively. And the wheels... Hmm. They're close enough. I may... Hey, boy. Usually I replace them. Now that axle's going to need to be straightened. I may try and fix them. Man, that would save me some money. Yeah, we'll see. Um, this interior was open, so it's going to be dirty and worn. But uh, not bad shape at all. And the glass is in really good shape. Yeah, this car is almost not bad enough to need a restoration. I'm not going to take this off. If you look closely... So you see that's cast like that. I mean, you could try and spread this out a little bit, but most likely you're gonna crack this and just break it or break the pins. So uh, what I'll do is, is I'll paint it closed and that engine, I don't think the engine needs any work. It's in great shape. Yeah, pretty cool. Looks great. So the first thing to do is going to be to uh, strip off this paint. And uh, then I need to decide what I'm going to do with this base. Boy, those tires, yeah, I might take the wheels. See, the wheels are, are bearing wheels. Let's get them off and take a better look at it. So this is the thing. The safest thing to do is to cut these off because if you pull them off, you could damage the bearing. And then you're in a world of hurt. But, man, they're not in bad shape. I would much rather keep the originals. <clears throat> oh, man, that's, oh, that's not coming off easily. Okay, that one came off. That's one. That's two. See, what I'm afraid of is that I'll pull the bearing off. Okay, whew. it's like I'm sweating here. Okay, I gotta get this one off. If I get this, then we'll save these wheels. I'm already gonna save the three. Oh, come on, this is taking a lot of pressure. 
Nope, okay, we're gonna cut this one off. I'm not gonna risk it. So I did it off camera, actually I was recording it, but I got a phone call and I filmed on my phone, so it kind of messed stuff up a little bit. But I, I bent the axle back with this little, it's not designed for it, this is used for my airbrush for like a wrench. But um, yeah, I just used it to bend the axle back. It's still not perfect, but I think it's gonna be okay. That's another thing that's a lot easier with the wheel off. So let's see if I can chrome these wheels back up. I'm gonna try to get on camera, but I may have to just start on camera and show you the finished product because it's kind of touchy. Oh, yeah, it's gonna look good. What I think is really interesting is that, look, the, the red line, like it's not perfectly centered. Like often the reproductions, here I'll show you a reproduction. Here's a reproduction. Often the reproductions are actually a little bit better with the red line, but uh, I don't like the, the chrome section on the reproductions as much as the original. It's me being picky though. So those chromed up pretty nice. Uh, you're seeing them super zoomed in. I, I can see all the flaws, but you're not gonna be able to see that with your naked eye. Yeah, at least with my eyes. So if you're wondering, I used a uh, Molto, Molto Liquid Chrome Mirror Effect Pen. Yeah, I got this from Hobby Lobby, but you can get them all sorts of places. These markers are, are crazy awesome. Use them all the time. They're expensive, but worth every penny. So I've got a bunch of these reproduction wheels, and different man manufacturers make them look differently. If you notice, this one... I don't like these as much. They're dull and they kind of have a, a circle in the center. Um, this one, I got these from the Redline shop, which by the way is down, it's been down for a while. I don't know if he's uh, gonna go out of business, which is really disappointing. Uh, hopefully he'll be back in business soon. But uh, these look a whole lot better. And um, yeah, because they're the, the kind of the same sheen and chrominess. So this is what I'm gonna use. So we'll drop this guy in the stripper tank. I'm curious to see if I'm gonna to need to end up zinc plating it or not, because uh, a lot of the body still had a lot of paint that was protecting the zinc. I might be able to just polish it up. We'll see. All right, now I'll go wash this mess off. And we'll see uh, how much more work we need to do on it. So that cleaned up really nice. In fact, I don't think I need to zinc plate this. It, Probably would make it look a little bit better. But this looks really good. Look at that finish. Yeah. So this car, man, that's one of those hard ones. It probably would have been fine without a, uh, a re restoration. Um, but it is going to look nicer. I, it would look weird in my collection where everything's pristine and then having one that's not. Uh, and I don't have this one in my collection. Uh, the base is pretty corroded on the bottom. This does need a lot of help. Um, so I'm going to scrape off that, what looks like chewing gum there, and uh, then we'll do something about this corrosion. So my goal with this base is to be able to read the, the words, and under magnification I can, like right now, what you can see, but with my naked eye, I can't, and normally I can. So hopefully I can get all this discoloration and stuff all this crud off of it so I can read it. So sulfamic acid is the easiest way to do this. What it does is it only affects the, uh, the oxidation or the corrosion, I guess. I'm not, I'm not a chemist. Uh, but it doesn't affect the, the bearings or the actual metal unless you leave it in there for a long, long time. So I'll leave this in here for 10 minutes-ish and uh, then pull it out and then it's really easy to clean off the base using some steel wool. And again, this is sulfamic acid. You can find it in uh, the cleaning supply section, believe it or not. So while the acid's working, I'm gonna clean the windshield and the interior with a little bit of soapy water is all. Not in bad shape. All right, it's really reacting in there, reacting big time, so I'm gonna pull it out. Should be good enough. It doesn't need a lot, I don't think. Let me see, it might be tough to get it out of here without touching it. Oh yeah, that good. Easy, 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 easy. Sorry for the reach. All right, so I'm gonna wash that off. 
definitely change the color. When it gets dark like that, see how much darker it is? That means that that has reacted and it's ready to come off. So that's a really good sign. So interesting, on the inside you see it's not as dark. It's because it wasn't as corroded. It, I guess it wasn't exposed to the elements as much. On the outside, all that darkness is where the corrosion was. Interestingly, there isn't much corrosion where the chewing gum was. I wonder if the chewing gum actually protected the metal from corroding. Hmm, interesting. I'm not gonna polish this base, but I am gonna get it looking nice and metally, more shiny. So I'm not done, but I can already tell, I can read this easily with my naked eye, even from a distance. Huge improvement. So I've still got a lot to do. You can see it's kind of blotchy. Uh, still more to do, but um, yeah, a whole lot better. Let's get the wheels on this space. Let's see how well I did at getting the, the axles straight. And they just press on. It's really, really easy, really easy. Oh yeah, it rolls great. And all, all four wheels touch at the same time. Yeah, I prepped this to paint. And I realized I had forgotten to drill the posts out. So you gotta do that so I can screw, uh, screws into here so the that the base can, can, can be attached. And uh, yeah, I'm really bad about forgetting to do that. And if you don't do it now, it can be a mess after it's painted. Now I gotta be careful. This is actually probably one of the few difficult things to do here because these posts are super skinny. So I'm gonna drill straight down. In fact, I'm gonna do this off camera to where I can see better. A little disaster struck off camera. You see, I didn't have quite the center when I was drilling it and it broke through. So that just makes life quite a bit difficult for me. Oh, I haven't decided how I'm gonna do this. I might have to play around with this and I'll show you how I deal with it afterwards. Did as I filed down that post. Thankfully, it was a tall post. And then I use my center punch to punch there. I know I'm still off here, so it still has the potential that my drill bit could wander. Let me very slowly drill down, and I should be good enough, just enough for the, the screw to just to grab, and that's all I need. So yeah, that worked. It's not pretty. I definitely wouldn't trust it to like go down a, a loop-de-loop of a track. It'd probably break loose. Uh, but it's gonna keep it together enough so it'll look nice on the shelf. I went through my paint and the closest I could find was this rose. And I think that's what this color was before. It definitely wasn't the purple. The purple was much deeper. Um, so this is what I'm gonna use. This is one of my favorite colors anyway for the red lines. Uh, so nothing wrong with doing that. Um, yeah, so how I prep these is I'm gonna put on some gloves because any of the oils in my hand is gonna make it so this urethane doesn't uh, doesn't stick. This is, I have to mix this with some uh, hardener. And um, then I'm going to wash this with a, uh, what I usually use is uh, acetone. And uh, then we'll, we'll spray it. And I'll, what I'll just do is I'll just keep this closed and that'll keep the engine bay all nice and pretty. Uh, so yeah, when you see this back, it should be all beautiful. The, uh, the Redline Shop Urethane Paint does a great, great job. Uh, hopefully they'll get it back in stock and he'll be able to sell it some more. Right now the website's down, has been for several weeks. So I feel like sometimes I forget to show you the finished paint job, but man, isn't that nice. Wow, I think it is the same color. We're really close. Looks so good. So good. I love that paint. So I think it's time to put this guy together. See if I can remember how it went. The glass I just cleaned, I didn't have to do anything to it. Same deal with the interior. I'm sure I'm gonna catch some flack from people because this, as was Barely didn't need to be a restoration. But it just wouldn't look wouldn't look right in my collection if it hadn't been if it wasn't perfect or close to perfect. Alright. Um, that's a good roller. <laughs> it's too bad this isn't gonna be played with. 
Uh, but doesn't it look nice? Uh, looks really nice. Wow, that is a good looking restoration. Now I know this one wasn't super complex. If you do like really complex restorations where they're completely trash and they need to be fixed, check out my other videos. I got plenty of those. I've got, I just got a shipment of about 50 really horrible specimens of both red lines and a really old Lesney uh, matchbox that are just, uh, let me see if I can grab one. They are just in terrible shape. Like, look at this twin mill. Boy, that's gonna be a fun restoration. So I got a bunch of those that are coming down the pike, so if you'd like to see those, then subscribe. If you want, you don't have to. Um, but yeah, I mean, this turned out really good. Uh, if you remember, this is the before, and now we have the after. And I hope you really enjoyed this restoration as much as I did. I really like these laid back ones. Uh, I can be really busy. And sometimes you just don't want to do the really complex ones that are stressful. This was no stress at all in this one. And uh, it was just a really good time. So uh, I hope to see you in my next one, whatever, uh, whenever that is. Goodbye.